been much in our thoughts these last couple of tough, rough days. Thank you all. Thank you. Constant, you've done the right thing. Well, I hope so. We're tough. We hope so. We hope so. It's tough. Mr. President, there's a couple of things I just wanted to check with you quickly okay. that we've been doing. Number one, uh, I'll send over a talking paper today that might be about useful background for your visit with Nehru. Last night at our urging, finally, and I haven't got the final language, the UN issued an international appeal for more contributions uh, to help India. Uh, that language had caused us some problems. Uh, and as I say, I've got to call into Gober to get the final language. We will add to it, which I don't think it has now, and you might want to take this up with, with Nehru, uh, something, some kind of procedure whereby nations could report and the UN would announce uh, the additional items and amounts that they might be willing to contribute. So uh, uh, I'll send that language over for you. Number two, I know that uh, you've been thinking and so have I about uh, some kind of a sharing formula that uh, would be workable. Uh, there may be a question as to whether you might want to talk about that before you see the Indian Prime Minister. In any event, uh, there are two possibilities here that we've thought about. I'll put them in the talk paper, too, that you may or may not want to review with Nero. All right, I think that's good. How, uh, I'm getting awfully skittish on the Indian thing because I get any contact, a burnt child reds of fire, and any contact I have on it, I'm misunderstood. I'm in, by implication committed to underwrite the famine, or by implication committed to give them 10 million uh, tons, or by implication committed to do it all between now and 1st of May, or by implication this. Then I get 14 memos from everybody in the government. It starts with bowls, and then it goes to the state, and then it goes to every Indian lover in town, and then it goes to all the do good columnists, and then agriculture, and then Bob Comer, and then Bundy, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't want to do it that way, and that makes me immediately, just to save myself, I feel kind of like they're getting ready to rob my bank. I have to put up the bars and close the doors and, and uh, wait till it all dies down or until I can get it started. Now, what I'm going to tell Nehru today is very simple. I'm not going to make any big commitments, and I'm not going to underwrite anything. I'm going to say to him today just what I said a long time ago. I'm waiting to see what kind of a foreign policy we can have with your people. I just want to see what, it's not going to be a one-way deal. I'm not going to just underwrite uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, perpetuation of uh, the, the government of India and the people of India to have them spend all their goddamn time uh, to dedicating their, themselves to the destruction of the people of the United States and the government of the United States. Now, we're going to sit down and have a little good, free discussion. I'm ready to do it for Shastri. I'm pretty sensitive about your trying to bludgeon me on account of the visit. You were wrong on that, and I don't like it, and you didn't help yourself a damn bit with it. And if you want to go to Russia, there's nothing I'd welcome more. I'd just give you a certified check and publicly applaud it, just like I did the cash can agreement. I'm not the slightest concerned about your, your getting help from Russia. You get every damn dime of it you can. This business that the communists might help you a little. Therefore, I've got to give you everything I've got. Doesn't appeal to me. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but if I am wrong, I'm going to be wrong for three more years, and that's that. And we just don't need to get into it. Now, I'm waiting for that. It's not my problem. Uh, whenever you all can come, I won't talk about it, and I won't try to meet you fair, halfway and fairly. And I do think you've got a problem. I do think that uh, you need help. I do want to help, but it's not going to be a unilateral thing when I do it. When I do it, I'm going to say to the Congress, I think they have a bad situation here. I think these people need help. Now, I want the Congress to join me if they agree, because I'm getting enough help right now trying to keep up a treaty that the Congress uh, passed, 81 to 1, and reaffirmed by a resolution of 504 to 2. I'm catching hell about it right now from the very people who handle it. And I'm going to make them get out here and tell us what to do in, the, in the amount, in dollars, in commodities, and uh, in time. And if you want to get 5 million tons, you just better get ready to get the Congress to say, we hereby appropriate X dollars for Y tons to buy Z date. And we, we understand what we're doing. It's not going to be one of these under-the-table uh, transactions. Now, 
the president will be on your side to the extent that he will recommend conditioned upon others doing their part whatever is a reasonable generous amount for the united states of america he can't do it for canada and he can't do it for germany and he can't do it for japan and he can't do it for anybody else but he can do it for the united states but if you can't be a drop anywhere in the world but us we want to be damn sure a the people of the united states know that and b the people of india know that and then we'll let them debate it. They always want to debate up in the Congress, and we'll let them vote on it. And I have no superpowers as an executive, just mash a button and say, here, I'm going to give you $300 million worth of wheat, or $400 million worth of, oh, 10, for that matter. I just, I'm going to have that approval. I don't think they're going on that basis at all. I think they just assume when they walked out of our office because I was courteous, and I don't want to apologize ever for being courteous. That's all I was to subgrain him. They just walked out on the assumption that Johnson's going to give them $10 million. I see our own mission out there, your people out there. You saw the story written from out there that it's just kind of assumed that we're going to do that. Now, I don't want to get that stuff around, and for that reason, I'm just as uh, shy as a, as a high school girl that's been jilted. I feel very much like a burnt child read the fire, and I'm scared of it. So. Uh, I want to say to, uh, to Nehru today, A, I want to see your people very, very much. B, we want to do anything we consistently can to be helpful. C, whatever we do is going to be on a shared basis, not only with self-help on your part, but with other nations, because we're not the only nation in the world that's compassionate. Now, we're not the only nation in the world that's got resources. Now, we may be the only one that a bunch of kooks that just insist on giving it away and run up and volunteer and rat rope somebody and knock them over to give it away. But uh, you get busy on these others, and then we'll get busy with our Congress, and then you come up here, and let's, let's let the Congress see what the rest of them. Because they're just giving me hell on Vietnam, and I just very honestly, I agree with the liberals. I don't think we ought to be out there by ourselves. I don't think this is just our fight. I think it, it's Australia's fight. I think it's New Zealand's fight. I think it's Malaysia's fight. I think it's the United Kingdom's fight. I think it's a German's fight. If the communists take over there, I think they'd take over Berlin. They can. And I think it's everybody's fight, but they're leaving it to us. Now, I think the Indian food problem is 114 nations' fight. and. Uh, if none of them are interested but us, why then uh, that's something we got to at least let the Indians know, because the Indians really don't know that. Anybody that treats their president as the Indians treated your president is not a very compassionate, understanding person, because I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to get a bill through Dirks. I'm trying to get a bill uh, through Passman. I spent two hours and a half with him down here night before last at the end of a very tired day trying to convince Otto Passman and using George Mahon and getting George and his manager and his newspaper man and his wives to come down to my home to get enough money for India. And when I'm trying to help India, then I'm just getting one denunciation after the other by those folks. Now, that's all right. I'm not going to be quit them and do the wrong thing because denunciation. But I want to find some way for the people of India to know that the people of the United States are the ones that they have to A, look to, and B, the only ones that respond, if they are. Now, we had not got it in that perspective. When a man comes to my office, he says, I think now, in really order for you to do a good job now, you better get them out one million tons right quick between now and tomorrow. And if you'll do that right quick, well, then we'll, we'll last for another third day, and we'll be back for another million two tons. Well, now, that's not, we're not going to act that way on What we're going to do is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we're not going to make them all these economic grants and, uh, and uh, that we've been making. Uh, we're not going to make them these loans. We're just going to sit here until they find it to their interest to come and discuss and to negotiate and to outline what it is they want us to do. And if all they got to propose to me is a way for me to deliver some money to them, then I'm not going to be interested in it. I'm interested in their helping us, too. Now, how can they help us? What can they do to help us? I don't see any of that in this hardball of trade. And I want some of it. And I just don't know. I know how they did help me. 
They said that I was a dirty, low-down so-and-so because I asked them to wait till I got to Vietnam and my foreign aid bill out of the way because I couldn't commit them a dime. Now, I've been ready and willing to commit ever since then. But they, they, they've been in no goddamn hurry. This Congress got out of here last uh, August when uh, we got my foreign aid bill ready, and I said, I'm ready any moment. And they didn't come. Now, I did come. But they just uh, found a lot of reasons why they don't come. And uh, I don't know any reason why I would send a man out there to, to, to uh, shovel it on them. So I think it's really, as far as you're concerned, there's, there's two things we have to do. First, we have to quit leaving the impression. And I know we don't do it deliberately. I know it's accidental. I know though the Phil Potters and the, the uh, sympathetic reporters get a sympathetic response from sympathetic bureaucrats. And I can understand that. I'm not critical of it. I just uh, don't want it happening. I think we got to say that we just don't know what our future is with India until our two leaders talk. We just can't shoot in the dark. We just have no commitments, whatever. We have no agreements. These agreements <laughs> run out. And the president cannot go there, and he told him, and he told him he's ready to receive them. Whenever they come, we, we'll have to develop a new agreement. We'll have to negotiate a new agreement. And what we do, I've got to pull in somebody else now and say to him, by God, I want you to go make a trade for me. And I want to see what uh, you're going to do for the United States. That's what I'm interested in. Now, you're interested in what we're going to do for India. But I want to see how this balances out on the scale. When I put my wheat down here, it cost me a few hundred million. I want to see what you're putting on the other side. And uh, if it's just a bunch of bullshit and a lot of criticism of the president, well, that's a different thing. And I think that what you can do and your, your group can do is try to evolve, which I'm afraid we haven't given much thought to up to now, uh, assuming that the world was a decent world, and we got a community chest operation going on. Uh, we've got to see what we can expect from the Big Givers Fund, and what we can expect from the, from the Doctors Fund, and what we can expect from the Labor Fund, and what we can expect from the rest of them. And I'd like to see how that is uh, proportionally divided, number one. Number two, and I'd like to see what it is that we ought to give, if it's wheat or fertilizer or something. Uh, I'd like to put that down, number two, and, and the total amounts. And number three, I'd like to see on what condition we base that, on what she does and on what the rest of the nations do. And number four, I'd like to have a message written to the Congress and a bill introduced and passed, which will be known as the Indian... Uh, food bill or Indian relief bill or for the relief of the, uh, the uh, Indian nation or something of that kind. And I'd just like for them to take it and go to Foreign Affairs Committee and maybe to Agriculture too and let them have joint sessions and let them have hearings and let them tell why it's needed and go the same thing in the Senate. And then when they get through, I want to put the money in the bill. If they want appropriate money to or at least I want the record to show that next year they're going to have to add to the Commodity Credit Corporation $700 million to this money that we have spent on India. I don't think anybody has any conception that that's what we want to do, do you? No, sir. Well, that's what we do. That's it. I, I think they felt we could just have kind of a back room deal and shove it out. And, what, uh, uh, and I'm against it. Your timing on the message in the bill is, is, is what? Well, I just, quick as she gets here, I don't know. I don't know when she's coming. I asked her to come. I thought she'd come the latter part of January. There's some indication she's coming the early part of February. I'd like to have it today, but I don't want to send it up till I get some kind of agreement out of them. I, uh, what are they going to do for the United States? Do you know? No, sir. Don't you think we ought to? Uh, the one thing, Mr. President, that they that they can do that I think is the top of your list, it would be on mine, is uh, is uh, to get along and work out something with Pakistan. And I know that's what you want, and uh, that's not something obviously that I, that I can articulate with them very well for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, only you can do that. Outside of that, Mr. President, I'm not sure what they can do. To uh, to be really frank, we want to help them, there isn't a hell of a lot they can do for us outside of what uh, you've already said, uh, that is to behave themselves in the world. 
and uh, uh, only you can, can carry that. Well, down. what I think we ought to do, I think we ought to get somebody that we can get, maybe Arthur Dean's man, to figure out now what is it that the 600 people in India, million people in India, could do to help the United States. I would think they could help us uh, if they could understand our objectives in the world and our viewpoint. And, well,